Welcome to Come and See, your podcast for finding truth in a world of chaos. Brought to you by All for Jesus Living Waters Ministry. With host and founder, Richard Case, and co-host and retreat leader, Kathy Riccone. Join us every weekday at this time to discuss news, spend time in the Word, and receive answers to your personal questions about living life in God's truth. And now your host, Richard Case. Well, good morning, Kathy. Uh, Good morning. Today's uh, Wednesday, and uh, we're excited about that. Uh, I think I shared that um, I was able to take my grandson, Aiden, to a Nuggets game. Yes, how was it? Nuggets play, it was great. Uh, (laughs) We got uh, parking right, right in front of the stadium. Uh, oh, excellent! Uh, and then they uh, they had us. Uh, we had to scan uh, a uh, OCR code, mm-hmm. um, and then it came up and says, "You know, you you're verifying that you know you don't have COVID, you're not sick, et cetera, et cetera." And then you know, Aiden had to do the same thing. So we had to basically uh, agree uh, that we were walking in, you know, with without any problems and that we would, right. we would wear a mask, you know, during the game and which we did. Uh, so mm-hmm. we had, we had great seats uh, on the uh, first section near the floor. And uh, so we, we got to see everybody and. Uh, oh, that's so fun. The, nu- the Nuggets won. So that was fun. Uh, <laughs> but uh, he and I had a great time. Um, and uh, he got, he got to talking to uh, a couple behind him uh, uh-huh. about the game. And he, He's a student of, uh, he's an athlete, so he's a student, and he knows a lot about mm-hmm. the players and who's doing what and what to do next, you know, and all that. Well, he got in a conversation uh, with this couple uh, behind us about the game and his perspective on the game and, you know, what they should do and not do. And so when we left, um, the guy stopped me and said, hey, uh, I'd like to let you know that uh, this is one fine young man, uh, and that uh, we enjoyed, you know, conversing with him. Right. Uh, and one of the things that Linda and I have purposely done uh, ever since they were little uh, is that, uh, and we saw this, and I can share just briefly about this, but uh, Linda's a German, and her family's from Germany. Mm-hmm. Um, and they're not, you know, typically... Uh, you know, they're not like Americans that would that go out to dinner frequently. They once in a while right. they might. Um, they don't go. They don't go to movies. You know, they don't. They don't. They don't spend money on discretionary entertainment. You know, like right. we do. So as a result of it, and they all live reasonably close to each other. So what they do mm-hmm. do is gather every Sunday. Right. Uh, the entire family. Uh, oh wow. Uh, and they have. You know, they prepare a meal. And they'll they'll go walking and they'll play games and uh, mm-hmm. and they'll sit around and converse. But one thing we noticed um, as we were having ki- kids is that the little ones were always sitting there with the adults, mm-hmm. um, and they learned respect, honor, how to talk to each other. Right. Uh, you know, in a social how to talk to adults. How to too. talk how to talk to adults. Yeah. Uh, and listen and hold conversation, mm-hmm. you know. And so we noticed that actually and said, you know, we really, that's one of the things that we believe God is asking us to do is mm-hmm. to build a social environment that uh, the role of the parent and the grandparents and the cousins, et cetera, teaches these youngsters uh, the, mm-hmm. the issue of respect, respect, honor, listening, conversing. Uh, and so we, you know, we, we've taught them this our whole life that and we included that. And, and so they're... <laughs> You know, as a typical 15 year old, you know, he's mm-hmm. not silent. He's not, I can't talk to anybody, uh, don't know how to talk to anybody. He freely talks to everybody. <laughs> so, mm-hmm. so this guy said, Hey, I just want you to know that this uh, young man is uh, quite a guy, you know, quite a kid. And uh, uh, the fact that he, I think that he could converse, listen, mm-hmm. and, and respect this couple right. uh, really, really is what he's talking about. Uh, so we, we had a great time and uh, it was pr- pretty fun to get that reinforcement. Uh, right. Yeah. And what just a sweet affirmation from God. Yeah. Know, job well done. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you know, yeah, it's been fun uh, to see That's that. A... Uh, and we had a great time. He and I had a great time conversing and asking questions and how's it going. And uh, he's into tennis and drumming. And uh, 
So he's he's uh, spending his summer his summer practicing both those things. He he actually uh, has a little band now um, mm. in uh, Denver, uh, and I got Linda. And I got to see him actually last week uh, where they performed in a club. Oh, uh, fun! So it, it was fun to see you know see how gifted That's he is. That's great. And, I got to hear him play at y'all's anniversary event right. last last right. year. Remember? Yeah, right. he was a very talented drummer. Yeah. Well, think of, think of what you heard a year ago. He's uh, mm-hmm. because of his lessons and practicing. Um, he could be, if you, if you listened to him uh, play and didn't know it was a fifteen year old, mm-hmm. you would you would think that's a professional drummer. Awesome, uh, he's that good, you know. So that that's kind of fun. That's uh, so fun. I well, love I, it. I know we've had some discussions uh, uh, this last week, Monday and Tuesday, on uh, journaling mm-hmm. uh, and uh, the importance of journaling. Uh, one of the things we got a question uh, that came in about. Uh, the process of cross-referencing, you know, as you're as you're doing that, and um, so we wanted to uh, give a little bit of energy toward that uh, this morning on, you know, what is cross-referencing, uh, and mm-hmm. again, um, it's uh, in the scriptures, uh, and one of the things that that God will speak to us uh, is, I'm going to give you what's called the whole counsel of God, right? Uh, so that um, the Bible is very consistent. Uh, it's beautifully written. Uh, remember, inspired by different authors, but God inspired, so it all mm-hmm. it all holds together and it's all true. So that's something that might be spoken in the Old Testament, Isaiah, Jeremiah, Psalms, uh, could be cross referenced to other places in the Old mm-hmm. Testament as well as to the New Testament. Right. Uh, and okay. And the question is always when we talked about this. Uh, what do you have to speak to me? Mm-hmm. Uh, so that uh, as you are led to a verse and a place in scripture and you're camping out in that, um, then one of the th- ways to see what else God would speak to you about the very same thing would be to do a cross-reference. Um, mm-hmm. And that is uh, there have been uh, uh, the ability of these publishers to basically say, well, this verse that you're looking at can also be seen with more depth or more understanding uh, in a different place. Right. Uh, so and they, sometimes we then see it in a different cultural context too, and it expands the meaning in that way. Yeah, yeah the different context. Uh, what is it saying here? And again, what is God saying to me mm-hmm. as he basically, uh, what we call fill in the blanks or connect mm-hmm. the dots is that, well, here's something else uh, that I'd like to share with you. I was actually on a phone uh, with a woman uh, who's who's going through this uh, journaling and cross-referencing? And uh, I said, "Well, what verse really struck you?" Mm-hmm. And she uh, she read the verse, and uh, and I said, "Well, out of that verse, you know, what did it say to you?" And she she used a certain word. Uh, in this case, it was favor. Uh, that God said He's going to give me favor. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I said, "Do you know what that means?" And she said, "Not really." <laughs> uh, Okay, well, go go deeper into that, and why don't you take that verse and cross-reference it uh, on favor? Mm-hmm. Um, what does he say about giving you favor, and what is what is his insight about that and his promise about that? Uh, so now she'll go and do a cross-reference about it because it was, well, I, I'm in this verse. This is what uh, became life to me mm-hmm. from the Spirit. Um, uh, now I'd like to pursue that further. Right. Because your question, again, is really simple. What do you have to say to me? Uh, so, mm-hmm. the, the, so uh, well, some basic questions about this is, well, what Bible should you get? Mm-hmm. Uh, and how does it work? Uh, so uh, a couple of things, and then Kathy will actually show us one and, and show us how it works. But um, uh, in uh, it's called the Spirit-Filled uh, Life Bible. Um, and uh, it's I'll great. Yep. Uh, it's great. It's a great, uh, it's a great, Cross-reference Bible, uh, uh, New King James uh, version, uh, and then she'll she'll take us into the depth of that in a second. Uh, uh, that can be purchased for a good price uh, uh, at ChristianBookDistributors.com or CBD.com, um, mm-hmm. and you could look that specific Bible up, or um, you can put in uh, New King James Center Cross-reference Bible or ESV. English Standard Version Center Cross Reference Bible, um, mm-hmm. and then you'll have lots of options 
at different price points, I can get uh, you know one that is leather bound, one that is not uh, mm -hmm. paperback. Look this way, uh, and it's not a matter of um, uh, getting the most expensive one. It's really getting one that you can afford, as well as it does have the center cross references. Right. Uh, and you can go on and look in that. Amazon has them as well. Uh, quite frankly, CBD, who I actually know the president of, uh, has really, really good prices on these Bibles. Uh, mm. So there, that's a great place to go. But when we say cross-reference, um, and, and, and the key is get what we call a center cross-reference. There are cross-references in other Bibles, but they're not as thorough as a center cross-reference. So Kathy, mm -hmm. maybe you could uh, take your Bible there and, and help yeah, explain let me just show. how you do that. <laughs> so let me see if I can get it in focus. Um, <laughs> is that in focus? <laughs> yeah, we can, we can see it. And you can see- You can get uh, the general idea. Yeah, see where the center cross, cross it's in so, the center, yes. it's in so the center in of the, the page. Middle, yeah. Yes, oh, let's see if I can do this backwards. Yep, so go. right in this in this middle section, whoop, in this yep. middle section here, um, what it is, if you were to look at, um, you know, say I wanted to find this verse and it's, you know, verse number 23, then I come to the center and I find the 23. And then it'll have multiple verses listed under that. It's, it's a little too out of focus for you to see, but you get yeah. the idea. Um, same over here. And that will give you places where it is in other, where it's referenced in other places in scripture, sometimes a word, sometimes a phrase, sometimes um, what's going on culturally with that, but it'll give you reinforcements to help take it further. And we actually, we had fun with this this morning um, in my Tuesday ladies group. Um, we were talking um, about in James three, about um, the power of the tongue and um, we had some questions on going further on some of this and what's God really saying. And, and so we did some good cross-referencing and the beauty of, you know, and James, James pulls you back to Proverbs a lot. And so you see that, that wisdom coming through again, but it really was so beneficial to really almost shine a flashlight on what God was already saying there and just take it, take it further. Yeah. And so when, um, uh, Describe when you are, are going to, okay, I'm going to go to a different place in scripture. Mm -hmm. uh, and she just showed you it's in the center, that particular verse that strikes you. Mm -hmm. uh, it'll say, well, here's other places in scripture. Right. Um, and again, um, we can talk about, it's not just a single cross-reference, but you can go from place to place to place as you receive right. it. Okay, so describe the process of, how do you allow it to still be spiritual so that you don't get too mechanical uh, with it? Because uh, mm -hmm. some people say, okay, I'm going to do 10 cross-references and isn't that great? And um, I get all this information, but you stopped letting it be the relationship and stop right. letting it be right. the, the uh, spiritual process. So maybe you could describe uh, when you cross-reference, what do you do? How do you receive it? When do you say, you know what, this is nothing. I'm going to go to someplace else. Right, right. Uh, so for me, bit. when I cross-reference, let's say I'm reading along and there's a verse that a word really strikes me, or I just, you know, you feel that quickening of the spirit and you know, yep. God has more to say to you. Um, I don't run to the cross-reference first. I stop and I respond in that moment to what he has spoken and okay, God, what are you saying to me here? You know, what do I have to receive? What, you know, and so I process that out with questions before I even go further, um, and, and I like to do that because it's fun to watch him answer even <laughs> because a lot of times then when I do go back to cross-reference, I actually see him directly answer my question. But if yeah, I hadn't and, written it down, I uh, wouldn't recognize that. One you know? thing just to, just to highlight what, what uh, you said there is um, the goal isn't to cross-reference. Right. Uh, so it's not like, okay, I got a verse, I'm going to cross-reference it. Well, first of all, the verse that you received, <laughs> uh, yes. process that. Um, yeah. what did it say? What does it mean to you? Do your journaling with it. Ask the questions. Right. Uh, there's no rush. So uh, you might be in that verse for days uh, before, yes. you, before you even consider, okay, um, I've now heard what God had to say and I processed that. And I still may have some questions or things to, mm -hmm. to review, but um, I'm going to go see if there's anything else you'd like to share with me about right. it. Uh, and there's no rush to it. Uh, and it's not a race and it's not a study and you're not putting together a book report. Mm -hmm. uh, so Kathy, you know, properly said, well, I'm receiving what he's led me to first mm -hmm. and then, okay, now you cross-reference, what do you do? Right, 
So then, you know, if I cross-reference and if I get to a, a cross-reference and it honestly doesn't stir me, I will, I'll go to that verse because it'll lead to one verse. So I'll go to that verse and then I'll back up and I'll read the context right. of it. So really, you know, a handful of verses on either side of it. And, you know, most of the Bibles today are so well broken down into, you know, sections that I can go back and say, okay, I'm going to read this section right. and kind of get a pretty good idea of what's going on and read through that. And again, just wait and respond. Cause that verse that we actually, the one that sent me to that passage may not be what God is using to actually speak further to me. Yeah. And so when I read the whole thing, it not only gives me context clues and gives me a bigger picture of what's going on, but it also may be that that's a place that God is just, you know, there's a different verse in that passage that he really wants me to be ruminating on. Yeah. So let's talk and about so, that just for a second. Yeah. Um, so you're led uh, to a member is God uh, through the Holy Spirit mm -hmm. is guiding you to um, where, what he would speak to you. Right. Um, and so there's, again, I don't, I don't say, well, I was led to this verse, so I got to get something out of this verse. It's right. no, uh, it's read the entire paragraph. Uh, and you're asking the same question all the time. Mm -hmm. uh, do you have something to say to me? Right. Um, and it's not about, well, is that the verse? You don't look at it. Am I doing it correctly? Mm -hmm. It's, do you have something else to say to me? And you just described it as well. You, you, you go to another different paragraph. You, you read this, you read these verses and it may not be the verse that you actually referred to, but some other mm -hmm. verse in that, that qu what's called quickens your spirit. It's like, mm -hmm. pay attention to this. Right. Uh, this is life. This is something for you. Mm -hmm. uh, and you realize, oh my gosh, look at this. How wonderful is this? Um, and right. then, Okay, when you get that, what do you do with that? Again, it's the same thing. It's, it's back to just asking him questions and letting him respond, you know, writing out the answers he's given me on that and then asking more questions. So it's processing and none of it. I love that you said this earlier. It is not a race to, you know, by the end of my abide time today, I need to have hit three cross references <laughs> and whatever. In fact, if I did that, I, I probably didn't really fully chew on any of it. Right. Right. You know, so, so you want to be cautious of that, of really just enjoying it and digging in and letting him speak. Um, but yeah, so I would do, I would ask the same questions and sometimes it's that he's, there's an instruction that he's giving. Sometimes it is something he's wanting to receive. Oftentimes he'll show me something that's like, oh, do you see this? Do you see my character in this? I want you to know this part of my character. And so there's time that I'm digging in that. And and so even in that cross-reference, I may then, if I've been you know, led to a verse that leads me to a passage, I may be in that passage I was led to in multiple verses in that passage for weeks before I really move on to something else, just depending on what he's speaking. You just stay responsive to where he's speaking and taking me further. And that's another reason why I make good notes in my journal so that when I get up the next morning, <laughs> I know where my conversation left off. Right, right. You know. Right. And the um, uh, process again is uh, you're receiving uh, mm -hmm. spiritually, you know, what the what the father is trying to speak to you. So uh, it's where I'm getting life, where I'm getting insight, you're camping out, processing like we've been talking about. Um, and then uh, uh, as you as you go through that and, and you said this, Kathy, is that uh, there may be certain words that really mm -hmm. pop out at you. Um, right. Recently, I was being led, led into uh, a deeper level of what it meant to trust God. Mm. Uh, so I'm cross-referencing and I'm getting life. And again, all the verses that I cross-reference to, uh, some of them uh, are just, well, that's interesting, but there's no life to it. There's no quickening right. of my spirit. And what I do is I just skip it. Um, I trust him. If he has something to say, he's going to mm -hmm. enlighten me with it. If it's just... Well, it's just interesting. It's not really what I'm speaking to you. What I mm -hmm. do is skip that one, um, mm -hmm. and I don't spend any time on it. Now, again, uh, because remember, we're we're coming with it at his life as a child. He's really the one guiding us. So, right. if he needed me to come back to that, um, he will. 
Um, right. And, say, and no. sometimes he's done that for me. Yeah. You know, he'll say, no, no, I, he took me somewhere else first. And then he circled right back and said, now I want you to go there and you'll see there's life in that <laughs> right, space. Right, right. But he right. had to do something else first in me. <laughs> yeah. Or, or you're a cross reference to a different place. And then mm-hmm. that cross reference led you back. And he said, well, now yeah, I'd like you to receive right. this. Um, right. But one thing that you will notice uh, while you're digging into the the words, and we talked about going to the Greek and Hebrew, et cetera, is uh, a word will really pop out at you. Uh, and so on this issue of like I was doing with trust, one of the words that I kept seeing was peace. Mm. Uh, and the word uh, in uh, in the, both the Greek and the Hebrew is the essence of shalom, which is more than just lack of conflict. It's it's God's right. it's God's favor. It's God's bringing you to a sense of uh, contentment and uh, willing to follow and that I can uh, give you this peace. So I noticed that word. Uh, So what I did, and again, in my journal, I have a section, what I call my parking lot area, but Mm -hmm. I write, I wrote that word down, Uh, Mm -hmm. peace. I I, I knew I wasn't, I I knew I wasn't, you know, finished with uh, this aspect of trust Mm -hmm. and that he had more to say to me um, and one of my pro- my personal problems that I particularly had when I started this uh, was I got so excited about right. well, I trust ooh peace look at look at this you know and <laughs> and I just I just be the squirrel you know I just go from mm-hmm. thing to thing to thing because uh, I got so excited but I never received anything and, right. he, and he says no you gotta you gotta relax take it a step at a time you're not finished here yet with what I have on, on mm-hmm. trust but put peace out there. And then I go back and say, okay, now do you want me to explore that word uh, Mm -hmm. and what you have to say about that? You know, and yes. Okay. Yes, I do now. So I would look up um, again in my uh, app, uh, Bible app and, or you can do this online with crosswalk.com or or, uh, Mm -hmm. gateway.com, biblegateway.com. And you just put, put in the word peace. Right. Uh, Well, there's literally hundreds of verses that come up on peace. Mm-hmm. So uh, I would then start to process, which of these do you want me to have life in? And I'd, I'd read the, the verse. Nope, nope, nope. Yep. There's mm-hmm. one. Uh, go spend time there. And I go to the paragraph and I start processing. Right. Now uh, you think about what I'm doing. It's taken me months uh, to work through this because it's, it's not about, you got to get this right now and you got to finish this right now. Um, it's, Enjoy the ride, enjoy the walk, mm-hmm. get the life of I'm giving you. I'll I'll connect things for you, but mm-hmm. just enjoy what I'm doing. Um, and when I come to the point, God speaking, when I come to the point, Rich, where you believe it and you've experienced mm-hmm. it to the full at this moment, then I'll release you to go do something else. And that usually takes you know weeks and months uh, to get through that. Um, and, and as you, I think you made a comment a couple of times ago that even though you've, you've been in a place and received all he wanted you to receive Mm -hmm. a year later, two years later, he could say, Hey, by the way, we're going to kind of go back to this right? and I'm going to deepen this for you now. I'm going to give you some new revelation on it. Um, and it's great. So, so our walk with abiding, see, is the joy Mm -hmm. of day by day, step by step going on the path that he's given us Mm -hmm. uh, to get, you know, to go enjoy it and cross referencing uh, and word study uh, is such an important part of it. Don't do it as a system. Remember it's a relationship. Um, And, and, and and the question is always, are you enjoying it? Are you getting life Mm -hmm. from it? Is it speaking to you? And then you got, you got to camp out on it. So uh, it sounds like you uh, have really enjoyed that cross referencing and, and seen it. Absolutely. Absolutely. And I love, even in the midst of, um, you know, what, whatever it is, even we were talking today, even the correction is joy. You know, when we were talking about the tongue, there's some correction that comes in that passage. Uh, (laughs) And, uh, yeah, yeah, but even that, you know, we always come back to he is author and finisher. And so when we look at the, you know, look at the big picture and the cross referencing, even it's if he is stirring your spirit on something, then it's something that he wants to work and he wants to walk you through. And so, like Rich said, just enjoying that journey. It's not cherry picking and, oh, I'll take this verse, I'll take this verse. It's what are you speaking, God? And, and what do you want to say? How, you know, how do you want me to receive that? 
you know, what is the, and then what you do find, one of the things we talked about today, even so I'll come back to this example in James, when it's talking about the tongue and there's a, a verse in there that talks about, uh, I could wish I could remember it exactly, but basically that no, you know, no man can tame the tongue. <laughs> and then it goes on to talk about, you know, a few verses later, you know, can a fig tree produce olives? Can, <laughs> you know, all of this. And the reality as we look at that is we're not going for behavior modification. We're going for heart change. Yes. You know, and, and that is what really happens is you begin to receive scripture and allow him to work it through you is it's not that you're changing your behaviors to look like a better you you are transforming into something new to be the visible expression of the invisible god and you will naturally see that fig tree now producing figs <laughs> when you're staying connected to the vine yeah. you will produce the fruit that looks smells thinks feels like him yeah uh, and as a cross-reference um it's kind of fun, particularly when sometimes um, you wind up uh, experiencing something uh, surprised and or uh, what you would say, you know, I was, uh, uh, I believe the cross-reference was here mm -hmm. and you, you turned to the wrong page. Uh, yes. <laughs> uh, I've done that. Um, uh, we've had, uh, we just did this last retreat. <laughs> We have this exercise, uh, Ezekiel 34, from 11 to 30, uh, mm -hmm. of the statements that God makes. And so we give the instruction and, you know, go off and spend an hour, you know, processing it, come back and share. Well, this one couple, it's interesting, they both, uh, when I said uh, Ezekiel 34, 11 to 30, wrote down 1 to 10. Mm -hmm. uh, and 1 to 10 in that chapter is really uh, about... Uh, God challenging the leaders and say, I'm not really happy with you. Uh, and because you've done this, um, you know, I'm going to become, you know, their shepherd. And I have a, I have a kind of a chastisement. Well, they, they had mm -hmm. written down verses one, one to 10. So they do the exercise. They do the cross-referencing mm -hmm. exercise out of one to 10. Mm -hmm. uh, well, they come back um, and, you know, we were sharing and other people are getting these verses and they didn't, it didn't even register that they were in the wrong place, so, so mm -hmm. to speak. So uh, they said, well, my verse was, uh, you know, Ezekiel 34, 4. Um, and immediately I'm thinking, uh-oh. <laughs> uh, they started in the, in quote, the wrong place. Right. Uh, and, and, the, and the Holy Spirit, I'm hearing the Holy Spirit saying, <laughs> no, they didn't. Mm -hmm. um, I purposely had them start here because I, I have a challenge to them. And then I'm going to show them the answer to it. And then they shared with it and they, and they received it. They said, right. I got this verse and God challenged me and said, he's not really pleased with me because, because, because. And then I got led here and he said, this is what I want to do. And then he got led here. Mm -hmm. uh, this is my answer for you. Do you have a heart to go? And they shared the whole thing. And uh, uh, it was, and I didn't say anything to him about, <laughs> you, you know, you're in the wrong. I, afterwards, I said, you know, just to let you know how how fantastic God, the Holy Spirit works, right. is the instruction was to start in verse 11. Mm -hmm. uh, but you heard 1 to 10, and you, that's where God had you because he wanted to speak to you there. Right. And I said, how beautiful is that? Yeah. Uh, you know, how fantastic is that? Um, also, Kathy, I had a, uh, I had a really unusual uh, scenario. I was doing cross-referencing. Uh, I'm on an airplane. Mm -hmm. Um, and, uh, I'm sitting next to this uh, lady, uh, and I've got my table out in my Bible, in my journal. Right. Uh, and I'm cross-referencing and my Bible is there, um, and I'm writing and journaling. And then all of a sudden the pages start to move, mm -hmm. uh, all by themselves. Yep. Uh, I'm not touching them. Uh, they're just moving and they go and they go and they go and they stop. Mm -hmm. And I, 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 I say, wow. And I read that. And then it's like, Ooh, God's speaking to me about something, uh, related to this, but it's, it's an interesting, different, uh, wouldn't have been cross reference there. Right. Uh, but I write that. So I write that down, um, mm -hmm. and I'm journaling that I'm writing that down and the pages start moving again and they go, go to another place. Okay. So the lady next to me, um, uh, and I, I'm, I'm excited just to experience it. <laughs> right. But 
I'm just enjoying it. And she taps me on the shoulder. And she says, could you explain to me what's going on here? <laughs> uh, she said, I see what's going on. Uh, there's something happening here. I know you got your Bible. I know you're writing stuff. Mm -hmm. And I'm seeing it move without anybody touching it. Right. And you're stopping and you're getting something. What What is that all about, you know? So I said, well, um, it's called abiding and the Holy Spirit can do, can do stuff in a really cool way <laughs> Very if, creative. He, if he wants to. And this is what he needed me to receive. And so he's mm. the one moving the pages. Mm -hmm. She said, she said, I, I, you know what? I believe that. Um, yeah. I, I can't deny it. Um, I got to go. I got to learn this. I got to get, I got to get, I, I, I want to get to Bible and I want to experience that, you know? And uh, so it's, it's pretty funny. So the cool thing about cross-referencing is that you look at it as where are you taking me? Mm -hmm. Not did I do it right? Right. Uh, and I know I know that's how you've taught because uh, uh, people tend to say, okay, give me the system. Yes. Eh, it's not a system. It's a it's a tool mm -hmm. for God to speak to you. And uh, and I know you you've experienced you and Dan have experienced the ability to receive life. So you haven't right. let you haven't let cross referencing you know become uh, oppressive to you. No, it's, it is a joy yeah. to, to get to see what's next a lot of times, yeah. you know, and I have to do much like you were saying, I do have to pay attention to that parking lot because I can get overly excited about where he's taking me and just want to know, okay, oh, oh, oh what's coming next. <laughs> yeah, right. And, and, and I have to remind myself, slow down, throw that in the parking lot and, and receive what I'm speaking right now and enjoy that thoroughly. And then we'll get there. Yep. But that is, you know, that is something I have to be very intentional with because my personality is contradictory to that, yep. you know? Yep. And as remember, um, as you are cross-referencing, um, because of this concept of journaling, uh, it's not that, yeah, I was led someplace, isn't that nice? It's, it's what receiving, yeah. what is that? What is God speaking to me? What are my questions? Mm -hmm. What am I writing about? Um, and you write things down. And remember, uh, we've talked about the reasons for that, is that uh, if God has something significant, important to say, then our role is to record it so that we can process it and we don't, you don't, you don't forget it. And then it's a way for us to communicate and mm -hmm. record this communication uh, because you're going to be writing things that are going to be amazing. Uh, you're going to be receiving things that are amazing. God will do, mm -hmm. say, show you things uh, of abiding. Uh, and so as we continue our discussion on, on journaling, um, we wanted to go to this next uh, point that we've been at this concept of tips uh, for journaling uh, mm -hmm. of how to uh, get into it. Make sure you don't develop it as a system. Make sure there's a journal, you know, near you. Uh, Kathy, you talked about you have actually several places. Mm -hmm. uh, but if you could uh, get into the next one, uh, I think we're on the fourth one now in that list of uh, tips uh, for journaling. Okay, it says... Um, develop a simple method to review and find things in your journal. It can be a helpful resource to you if you can go back and find things. Yeah. Um, so uh, as you consider that, uh, and again, this is, this one is particularly personal. Mm -hmm. um, you, uh, you know, I, I've never desired to, or God's even instructed me, well, tell people what that looks like um, because it's how I do it is a certain way of, uh, and I do things simple uh, about uh, dates and I'll do, I'll clip, I'll clip pages uh, mm -hmm. and uh, I'll write down topics uh, uh, that I can go back to in different color so I can flip mm -hmm. through it and say, this is how I've organized it. Um, so that kind of thing works the way I think. Um, do you have any, any, uh, how you've, being able to use it so you can go back to it um, and right. pick, pick up things that maybe even you wrote, you know, three or four months ago, but now you can go back and find it pretty easy. Do you have any, right. any approach well, you've done? Just those little, um, you know, well, a couple different things. I do tend to, this is so, so elementary, but it works. Um, I, I will, um, what do you call it? I'd like fold over the top of the page, yeah, earmark. Yeah. So earmark, earmark the earmark. top of yeah, the I page. That. That's when I say clip um, the page, I'm earmarking the page. Yeah. yeah. So I, I will earmark the top of the page if it is something that I know 
um, I may need to come back and revisit a, like a certain, if there's just certain things that I'm like, okay, that that's not all the way blown out, but it's still not where he's going. You know, so I'll clip that and then I'll clip the bottom of the page if it is something that he has given me, because I'll be journaling and it's not uncommon for him to give me what I feel is like a very personal instruction yeah. that I'll go as far as to write in quotation marks. It's not his word from the Bible, but it is a response that I feel he's speaking to me and I'll write it out. So I clip the bottom of the page from that. Um, the top of the page is more if it's a scripture and the bottom of the page is more if he's speaking. Oh, cool. And then I will go back and um, put in like the little, you know, the little tabs, the, the yes. what are they called? Post-its, yeah. but they have the skinny, tiny ones. Yeah, yeah. Um, so I will go back periodically and, and mark certain types of things with color coding on those, um, so that I can kind of see different things, but that I don't do often. I do that personally. This is just how I work. I think I told you kind of how I work in rhythms. I like about every three months or so to kind of do certain things. And so I will go back and review everything that's gone on and look for the big themes and I'll write out, um, I'll take several days and I'll write out, um, by month, these were the big things that he was saying to me. And then I kind of tab them where I can find them. And, and then it's a good resource to come back yeah. to. Yeah, that's you great. Um, so, uh, and sometimes I do a better job of that than others. Yeah. I, I am currently behind on that. So I'm saying yeah. that and being reminded, yeah, I need to go back and do that part again now. Yeah. And remember, uh, it's, uh, it's just walking back through it. Uh, mm -hmm. So that is there any easy way for you to uh, stimulate that. Uh, it's not, it's not required. Uh, yeah, but it's uh, it, helpful. It, it can, is helpful. It, it can be helpful, yeah. but you got to find your path with that of here's what mm -hmm. works for me. Um, by the way, uh, uh, I've just shown up on the screen here that, uh, if you have questions about journaling, about abiding, about cross-referencing, anything, anything you'd like to ask, uh, really about any topic, uh, you can write it in the comments section on our YouTube uh, or you can email us at questions at uh, afjministry.com, questions at afjministry.com, uh, and we'd love to uh, receive those. Uh, one thing that I do uh, in terms of my, my uh, approaching to abiding is, uh, and I'm generally abiding in something for uh, what I would say a month or two or three or even, even as long as six months, um, mm -hmm. uh, and... I've learned not to try to get to what I call the end of it and say, okay, just tell me all that it means. Mm. Um, it's no, enjoy the path. I'm getting the insight. I'm getting the, uh, uh, the uh, life of it. Then what I do is um, I go back to the very beginning of it. Uh, and I've written out the scriptures. I've written out what, what questions I had. I've written out uh, my hearing what I've heard. And I'll literally go back through it uh, day by day by day. And now I'm mm -hmm. in another place in my journal and or usually another journal uh, is uh, I'm starting to receive the uh, sequencing of it. Mm, uh, and the sequence, the sequencing tends to be uh, fairly straightforward of, mm -hmm. well, what's your question? Um, well, here's my question. Okay, let me, let me, uh, now that you've been through all this, um, I'll go back and take uh, my first fundamental question and all the verses and all the things that God said about that particular thing, I'll then put mm -hmm. on a separate page. Um, and I, and in this case, uh, because I've earmarked those pages, um, I'm just writing the Bible verse down, not the reference uh, right. and what page I had in the journal. Uh, then, okay, then where does that lead? It leads to this. Okay, we'll go back and do the same thing. So, so what happens when in my the way I do it, um, I'm taking all of that, uh, which could be a whole journal filled up, or maybe even a journal and a half or two, uh, and I keep going back through everything, mm. um, uh, and and saying, okay, well this fits under this sequence, and uh, and see you approach things in a be really beautiful way is okay if this is true. Mm -hmm. Well then, what what is what would what would be next, or what how would this work, or uh, what's what's important to walk through down the path of it, and you and God starts to put it together for me, uh, so that I can walk all the way through it, 
and ultimately I've gone through my, my journals uh, and now I've got another journal uh, and then I'll go from there and uh, and the question is always do you receive it are you believing this mm -hmm. do you see it you know uh, so I and, I and I've learned not to worry about because uh, my tendency again is to I want the dots connected all mm -hmm. the time okay well just just give me the answer uh, mm -hmm. and I'd like this dot connected uh, and he says no, you're going to have to enjoy the walk. Uh, right. and, and what he showed me, and this is interesting uh, for me particularly, uh, is um, I'm, it's like doing a jigsaw puzzle. Mm -hmm. uh, and I'm giving you pieces that you start to place, but you don't know how it all connects. Right. Uh, and <laughs> interesting enough, uh, when he gave me this analogy, I even, I even said, well, God, you know, I don't even like jigsaw puzzles. Um, <laughs> you know, Linda uh, and, and my children, uh, they could spend hours and days doing a jigsaw puzzle. Right. Um, and for me, it's just something I never enjoyed. It's just, it's too <laughs> tedious. Uh, uh, I don't like it because I want to, if I'm going to do it, let's get it done, you know. Um, but mm -hmm. you can't do that with a jigsaw puzzle. And you get a piece and you kind of put it up there and you say, I, I know it fits up there. I don't even know how it fits, but I know it will. And uh, and it takes time, time, time. He said, well, that's how you're going to have to walk with me is mm -hmm. I'm going to give you a piece. Uh, I'll put the corners together. I'll put the edges together. And then I'm going to start filling in the pieces. Mm -hmm. Enjoy the piece. Rejoice that you got the piece. Put it up there. Mm -hmm. I'll, con I'll connect it later. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, so I, I've, I've you know, learned how to, how to enjoy that process. of, uh, And journaling is so critical to that. If I didn't mm -hmm. journal it would really ultimately be meaningless to me mm -hmm. because there, it would be, well, yeah, I kind of remember something about that right. later, but I, I could never go back over it. Um, right. It would just be, well, yeah, I got some interesting stuff. Uh, intellectually, yeah, it was nice, mm -hmm. but it never meant anything. Uh, without right. journaling, you, you can't get to that depth of that. Mm -hmm. So the other thing, thing that I think is interesting, just like as you're listening, you're talking about the pieces of the puzzle, it reminds me, um, I, Dan shared how our family has for years um, asked God to lead each of us. We'll do a corporate as a family, and then we'll also do individually mm -hmm. a word for the year, yeah. an area God desires to grow us in. And that is not unlike that puzzle. You right. know, Throughout the year, he will take us each to different places. And then ultimately you'll watch him weave that puzzle piece together and he puts it all back together into this beautiful picture um, that is full of surprises that we never even expected that tie back to the word that he laid on our heart at the beginning of the year. How do you, and how I, do you, uh, with that word, uh, uh, and by the way, my family does something uh, similar. We don't, we don't do the word. What we do is uh, verses that I've been given throughout the year. Um, mm -hmm. I'll highlight them. Uh, and then I'll um, uh, type them out uh, and put them in a basket. Uh, mm. New, New Year's Eve, uh, we, our, our uh, family tradition is uh, that we pray, God, would you speak to each of us specifically something that you have to say to us for the year? Mm. Okay. Uh, and so we, we take that, uh, put it in a basket, and then everybody goes around and just pulls one out, um, and then they read it. And then they, they say, okay, this is what it means. And then the following year, they're spending, they keep, we tell them to keep it up on your bathroom mirror uh, and keep asking God, what else would you mm -hmm. like to show me about this? And then we, we pray for each other. And, and what's remarkable about that I love it. is um, we're always overwhelmed by mm -hmm. the fact that, that, you know, that child or that grandchild got that verse it's exactly what God wanted to say to them, right. you know, and so we, we really trust it. But you say you get this word. How do you, what do you do with that throughout the year when you say, okay, we have this word in front of us. Um, mm. How do you abide in that and receive what God is speaking to you about that? Great question. So it starts for us, you know, we'll all be several weeks before New Year's. We'll be praying um, as a family about, you know, asking God to show us and kind of narrow down um, what he may be wanting, what that word may be for us as a family and for us as individuals. And then we'll come together and in our family prayer time, we'll talk about, you know, we, we have a set appointment kind of that you do kind of like when y'all do your basket, we come together and, you know, these are the things each of us will talk about. These are the things that God laid on our heart and lo and behold, they'll always 
intersect. So the family word chooses itself, you know, well, I shouldn't say choose itself. God chooses it, yeah. but he will have laid on each individual's heart, some variant of that very same thing. Wow. And, and then we ask him to give us a verse that goes with that. That'll mm. be kind of the banner verse for that. And that's a verse we keep in front of ourselves through, for the entire year as a family. And then sometimes the, you know, the individual also. So I have a board downstairs that has, you know, our family word this year is ask. Um, and my personal word this year is go <laughs> and, <laughs> and so, which go perfectly together. It's yeah. an interesting dynamic, but so I have some of the verses that he laid out that he laid on our heart. And so that kind of begins an abiding, do you, do right? you then, it's a starting point for an abiding with, with everybody for where they go. And then, you know, God takes different shoots off of it and does different things with it, but it's a great reference point to come back to. And it is a beautiful for us. Um, we have found, or I have found personally, because I've been doing the one word thing for for years. We've brought it into our family for the last several years. Um, but it is a place to see spiritual growth also. I think a lot of times we get to the end of the year. And if you aren't intentional, that you talk about journaling. Journaling is a great place to see how God has grown you. Because you can go back and you can look at how you responded, you know, earlier in the year to the same type of situation or a year previous or whatever. And you see how God has moved your heart and grown you and how you're reflecting him more. And I think, you know, with the one word, that's, that's one way you definitely can almost mark spiritual growth. Um, and then looking back in your journal, you can mark the spiritual growth yeah. by seeing that. And so I think it's a sweet, that's a sweet, sweet place and a beautiful journey. And he does tie it all together. Do you as a family, periodically get together and talk about your words that you're growing in throughout the year? So some years we're better at that than others. This year, we have been very disconnected with that, to be honest with you. Last year, I think we did a great job with it. Um, this year, everybody's kind of in different, it's, you know, just seasons. And so we've got to be more intentional. So I know when we get together over 4th of July, um, and we've got everybody in one location again, that will be a sweet time to revisit, but that'll be the first time in really six months okay. that we have all of us in one place to talk through it. Oh, good. good. Um, and so that'll be, that'll be part of vacation. Yeah, you bet. <laughs> we'll be revisiting that, yeah. but, um, but we've got to learn to navigate that differently now that life looks different and we've got, you know. Yeah a kid's off at college and kids living in a different state and, you know, so that's a learning curve. We're working on that. Yeah. But, um, yeah. And that's the beautiful yeah. uh, life of God is that again, there's not a system. Uh, it's not mm -hmm. a have to a rush. It's uh, okay. Uh, as I'm speaking to you, uh, you know, here's some new uh, thoughts, ideas, ways to do this. Mm -hmm. uh, and again, the question always is, you know, are you receiving what I'm speaking? God speaking. Right. And then are you enjoying it? you know, uh, right, right. And that's, that's always the way to do it. And, and the way that you'll do it with you, uh, uh, as people are listening, it's, it's a million different ways. So mm -hmm. it's relationship, 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 the beauty of the relationship. And there, there is no program for it. It's, mm -hmm. we're giving you tools for it, but the joy is, is actually, you know, doing, walking through right. it. So, um, uh, wow, we we're already up uh, with our time today and we'll, Oh Con wow! <laughs> continue continue on with uh, uh, more more thoughts on uh, journaling. Um, we're going to have as our guest uh, tomorrow will be uh, Rick and Nancy Hoover. They're also from Castle Rock, where Linda and I live. And, oh, everyone's uh, going to love them. <laughs> they got a great great story of how we came together, uh, and uh, uh, they uh, serve us with uh, worship, uh, uh, and uh, and they're and such a joy for them and what they've learned mm -hmm. about uh, living life out uh, through their abiding. And so that'll be fun. Uh, to, yeah, to hear that, and we'll, and we'll have that. Them, we'll have them talk a little bit about journaling, uh, how significant that is, because they they've learned it, and uh, certainly mm -hmm. certainly great. So, uh, again, as uh, as we finish here, it's uh, if you have uh, questions, uh, put it on the YouTube comments section, or email us at afj uh, questions at afjministry dot com questions at afjministry dot com. and we'd love to talk about them, which we will continue. And uh, we've had a great time talking about journaling today and uh, we'll yeah, after after absolutely. our time with Rick and Nancy we'll pick it up again on Friday sounds great and if you enjoyed today and found it encouraging please be a friend and tell a friend be sure to pass on the podcast and um just we enjoy navigating the chaos with you all as we come back to the feet of Jesus amen okay we'll see you uh tomorrow with R Rick and Nancy 
Thank you for joining us for today's episode of Come and See, your podcast for truth in a world of chaos. Brought to you by All for Jesus Living Waters Ministry. Send us your questions and comments and tune in tomorrow for more answers to your personal questions about living life in God's truth. Remember, God's will is best and none better. His truth brings peace in this world of chaos.